Hi, everyone. Today I have Paul Palnick. He is in Columbus, Ohio. He's a very well known artist, writer. He's been a professor of art, cartoonist, painter, book illustrator. And today he's going to tell us about a really incredible experience. He has a bunch of them. And if you could just go right into it, Paul, that'd be great. And then afterwards, I'll ask you more about yourself. Well, as a, a very young child, uh, I, I don't claim any, any special gifts that anyone else doesn't have, first of all. Uh, but I, I seem to have been born with a, a curiosity about the meaning of things. And as a very young kid, I wanted to, to know the meaning of life. And I can remember asking my teacher uh, in elementary school, where does the sky end? I, you know, I looked up there and I'm thinking, what is beyond that? And what is beyond that? And what is beyond that? And only to be told to be quiet, and sit down. And then when I got into Hebrew school, when I was uh, studying to be bar mitzvah, uh, I, I figured, well, they must know. So I would I would ask the Hebrew school, so, some tired old gal, you know, making extra money after work. And, you know, the kids are tired. They sit down, you know, <laughs> they don't want to know. So when I saw that adults didn't want to answer these kind of questions, I would ask, my mother used to tell me, I would ask, why is this happening? She didn't know what I meant. And I would ask off, so often that she once uh, asked our pediatrician, he keeps asking, why is this happening? I don't know what he's talking about. So the pediatrician talked with me for a while and he, he, he finally got out of me. I wanted to know why is life happening? It doesn't have to be happening, but it is happening. And I wanted to know why. So that's my early form. That's the kind of kid I was. So I began when I saw the adults were no help in this matter, I began to teach myself how to meditate. And I began meditating secretly because it wasn't cool to be uh, uh, kind of wandering about God when in, in the crowd I hung around with, you know, we were playing baseball and that sort of thing. So uh, I kept it to myself because when, when I did volunteer uh, to talk about um, these kind of questions, uh, I was laughed at. I can remember the class laughing once when I, and I was totally embarrassed, you know, and, and kind of crushed because it was important to me, you know, but they thought, what a weirdo asking where the sky ends, you know, they, they don't, they're on the ground here. They want to know what's going on on, on planet earth. And my mind was always in the heavens. So I taught myself how to meditate and that went on for years and I learned to hide and to keep it to myself. Um, so I was teaching at the time, my, uh, when I got, I went to graduate school at the, at the Ohio State University and the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia and then at, again at Ohio State University uh, in studying art. And um, my first job, I remember I was writing and drawing greeting cards for American Greeting. And I did that for a while. And then I got a job teaching uh, art at the University of Arkansas. And uh, that's when I had my first really profound experience. Um, I was uh, unhappy there because my, I was so far from my family who lived back in Ohio. And uh, I was on my own and it was, uh, I can remember I was meditating on the, the passage in the Torah where um, Abraham realized a, a God and he fell on his face and God began to speak to him. And, and for me, that was, magic. The, the Torah captured me early. As soon as I heard that God, you know, on the first, that God created the inner, my mind's trying to picture all this. So um, anyhow, I, I would meditate on these passages. 
So I was meditating on that passage and I kind of fell into a uh, kind of a dreamlike state, almost asleep, a half sleep, half wake uh, period. And uh, before you know it, I was in another world, uh, in, inward, an inward thing, nothing, not outer space or anything like that, a state of consciousness, I would call it a heightened state of consciousness, perhaps the highest state of consciousness that, that people can experience. And I saw in my soul a white light. And, and to say a white light is to diminish what I saw because there is no words to say how the brilliance of this light. Uh, I, and I, I, I was like, it struck dumb in awe. And I'm looking, it, it was an inward thing going on. It was not something I saw the, outside myself. It was definitely in, in, inward. And it was this ex, exalted white light. And so I saw souls going to the light and some coming out of the light, headed into the, it was surrounded by pitch blackness, this great white light and, and this incredible blackness. But some souls were facing the light and some were kind of being pushed away into the, into the black. And it was, they were all frightened people. But the people going to the light, I would describe it as the feeling of an iron filing and a strong magnet. You're just sucked into this light. And it was a wonderful, wonderful feeling. And uh, that's my dog barking in the background. And uh, um, I was like that for at least an hour or two, just like that gazing at this white light. And beyond, beyond this white light, I'm sorry, I'll, let me move away from so she can't hear me. Beyond this white light um, was a even, even more refined consciousness. A, a, um, a, um, I can't even describe it. It's like if someone said, well, what did God look like? I, there's nothing to see. There was no, there was no image. Uh, but there was this this awesome light, and then I could remember it was it was I, I I came back down to to normal workaday consciousness, everyday consciousness, and um, had to go to the bathroom. Went to the bathroom, came back, fell back into that same state, right back into this incredible bilious white powerful light that, that seemed to, to be making everything live. And it was a, a, an ecstatic experience. And um, I was like that for another hour or so. And then I woke up and I wasn't sleeping really. And I, and I, and I, I realized what had happened. I'm sorry about my dog there. She, she sees people running around outside. Okay. Normal life on Zoom, right? We just, that's what it is. It is what yeah. it is. Okay. So um, I'm in my studio. So there's, I'm, I'm looking for a place to put this down. So, so uh, th that was it. Then I, 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 I thought, oh, I've, I've totally lost my mind. I'm teaching at the University of Arkansas. I can't go around telling people I saw God. You know, that's nuts. They, you know, people will just say you're nuts. So I kept it to myself. And um, I went, I remember going to the library and um, looking up mystical experience. Was this, was I unusual or is this um, something that occurs in to others? That I found a great deal. And I found that I wasn't crazy, that uh, the prophets had visions like this. And in the, the Indian tradition of the Hindu tradition of the Upanishads, 
they were a mystical group and they had visions like this. And in Christianity, that I, they had a similar like this and in all the different religions. And then I even looked in Islam and there were great poets like Hafiz and, and, and the, uh, who had these same mystical visions. So it's very comforting because, um, you know, we want to think that we're healthy mentally, spiritually people. So, uh, but this is something that you keep to yourself. And you know, this is the first time I've ever really talked openly about it. I, I, I have a dear friend who's a Chabad rabbi. I told him, uh, my friend who's a psychotherapist, I told him and my wife and that's it. But now I'm an old person, I don't care. <laughs> so that's, that's, the, the, that's the truth. I saw this white light, I swear on the soul of my family my children, my mother, that what I'm saying is true. And, 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 and it, I see it right now. I can, it, once you see this, you don't forget it. And when people say there is no God or they don't believe, or they're making a gigantic existential mistake that to think that this is all a big accident. This takes more chutzpah than anything, more, more craziness to think that, that our, you, you know, you're looking at me and I'm looking at you. We each have hearts. You have a consciousness looking this way. I'm looking that way. There's other people listening to this, that this is an accident. Can't be impossible. And, and uh, that experience that I had, um, uh, like the stamp of approval. I know it's not that I believe in God. I know that God exists. I know directly that God exists. I've had experience with God and, uh, and uh, uh, he's what you think. He's, uh, he's God. I mean, <laughs> it's beyond, beyond ability to speak. I, I, I can't say the words. To, to match the experience, but it, uh, it, it made me feel very comfortable about dying. I'm not afraid to die because it's contrary to what people think. It's, it's probably of the most beautiful experience that we're going to have in this life. Sadly, it's accompanied by pain, but I think that's part of the beauty of it because it, it's like giving birth almost, and you, you enter into a, a, a new realm, a completely new level of consciousness. And um, it's real, that's all I can say. And uh, it's not, I, I don't know why, I, I, I don't think I deserve to see any, I'm not any better than anyone else. I'm not a nicer person or a smarter person. I know plenty of people nicer than me and smarter than me. I don't know why I had this experience, but I did. And uh, I cherish it very much. And uh, I've had several other similar, but different experiences. When I was quite young and I was living in a, uh, our, our family home in Cleveland, I, I crawled up into the attic once of our home and nobody uh, knew I was up there. And I wrote on the beams of the attic uh, in Hebrew, the Ein Sof, which means the infinite. And I wrote it, it, little things that some the people who lived in this house loved God. And this was back in the 1950s when I did this. Here's, here's a real amazing story. My son, who now lives in Tel Aviv, he's a, he, he's a music producer. Uh, and uh, he was in Cleveland visiting a friend and they happened to go for a Shabbos walk. Let's go for a Shabbos walk, well, okay. My friend just moved in here, let's go visit my friend. Okay, they walked, visit my friend. He introduced him to my son, the pe people who own the home. And the guy says to him, is your last name Palnick? 
He says, yeah. He says, you've got to see my attic. My own son, 30 some years later, goes up randomly into the attic, sees it, and he's got a video of the whole adventure and, and the stuff written there. Yeah. So I tend to think that these things are not accidental, that um, God works in very, very mysterious ways. And just when you think that there is no God, suddenly he reminds you that he's there. And uh, ever since then, I've been a medi you know, meditating with great, with great energy. Thank you, Paul. That was incredible. Also to know you haven't shared it with many people. So I really appreciate what you shared. I have not. I bet you're about the fourth one. And now whoever sees this. But you know, I'm an old man now, 75 years old. So I've I kept it to myself most of my life. I think most people today, more and more, I'm noticing they're more open. And what you're saying about looking at the sky, I've realized the people that I can't speak this way, like you're speaking to me and I can speak with you so openly. I, the way I finally realize is I say people, some people have to have their feet planted on the ground and that's where they remain. And some of us have our head in the sky, in the clouds and on the earth. So we can be in both places and have these conversations because I have to have empathy for them just like they have to have empathy for us. I can't have these conversations with some people. They, they cannot hear these things. Right. Well, right. It's, it's not a question of being better than anyone. It's a question of being different. I, I find my inner world far more fascinating than the physical world. I spend a lot of time in my inner world. I've been developing it for a lifetime. I love, I, I'm a, a private person. I uh, spend a lot of time in prayer and meditation and reading and painting and drawing. And that's my life. And my wife keeps tugging me out. Well, we got to go, you know, meet more people. And I, I go and I like people. I love people. But uh, what was, but the, mot the prime motivator of my life is understanding what life means and what is consciousness why are we why are we aware you know most people they know how to drive their cars but they don't know that they're they don't realize their own consciousness they're not conscious of their own consciousness it's nothing to them i mean it, it they might as well uh, it's the most important thing. Without consciousness, there's nothing. What do we have? Nothing at all. I mean, the individual becomes null and void. So uh, when, it, when the Torah says that, that God made man in, in his own image, he's talking about consciousness. He's not talking about your, 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 your tootsies and your fingers and your, your rear end. He's talking about the the uh, your conscious mind and consciousness is is an infinite thing it's infinite there's millions upon millions of layers of consciousness and and an average person has consciousness that this low level of consciousness that we're, we're you know where people suffer because they're worried about this or that that's going to happen and all the way up to the the Ain Sof, the, inf the infinite. Uh, and, and everything in between. And uh, I, I spent a career uh, um, of making drawings. I made, made drawings by the hundreds um, about consciousness, trying to put like King David tried to put his mystical experience into words and he wrote hundreds of Psalms, but he still didn't touch it. It's just, he could have wrote another thousand. I made as many pictures as I could on, on levels of consciousness, on judgment, on creation and everything. And I, and I published them and, the, and I earned a living that way. And I actually earned a living from what I saw that day. I, by translating it the best way I could into language that people could understand. 
it still didn't work, <laughs> but I tried. It's, a, you know, it was my life. Thank you, Paul. So you were mentioning consciousness and that's why I became a hypnotherapist is realizing that most of our day is spent in the subconscious. Like you are saying, that's one of the examples I give when I have a new client, when they're asking more details about hypnotherapy, I say most of our day is spent in the subconscious. And one of my examples is driving. We just drive and sometimes we don't remember how we got to the next exit or how we, you know, a few turns that we made because we're so deep in our thought. And that's why I wanted to interview you is I feel like stories like yours, Paul, really help people because so many people are under stress, they have anxiety, fear, doom, you know, these negative thoughts and knowing that, that they can visit a place like you visited can help people or know that there's people out there like you that have seen something beyond this earth, which can be very difficult. So I have so many questions. I took notes. One of my questions is, how did you learn to meditate like that? And can you give us a little insight how to do it if we want to go where you yeah. went? I, uh, I can't t tell people how to get to see the light of God. You know, the eternal light, you know, hanging over the ark, the eternal light. That's, that's what I saw. And, and, and right behind the eternal light was, was him. Nothing to be seen, but boy, the presence was there. Um, one thing, the first thing I would say that people need to do is to focus their life, their mind on life. And what I mean by that is people are lost in the past People are lost in the future. I'll be happy when I do this. I'll be happy when I get married. I'll be happy when I get divorced. I'll be happy when the, on and on. Look what happened to me there in the pit. There's only one place, I was an art professor. There's only one place creativity occurs. Only one place, and that's the present. Creativity does not happen in the past. It does not happen in the future. It only happens as Bob Dylan said, the answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. It's the present. You have to go deep, deep, deep into the present. And if the, the, a, a very powerful meditation is when one, one realizes that the present is infinitely deep and it's eternal, it won't go away. I'll give you an example. It's the present is still now. It won't go away. It's still now. It's it's a fixed reality. The earth turns in it. The, this present that you and I are speaking in now, and, and the present that it, whoever sees this, it's the same present on the moon. It goes through your body completely, the presence. It goes through all your thinking. It's on the other side of the universe, it's the present. On the sun, the moon, every without the present, there's nothing. That's why they say Hashem, God is omnipresent. He's He's eternally present. And and if you want to live, you have to come to the present. You have to, you have to, if the present could talk, the present would say, you have to come to me. You can't have another God before me because that's where life is. Life is found in the present. And God's presence, the Shekhinah, is, is this absolute presence that causes all life, tells trees how to grow, tells me how to speak, tells the earth how to turn, tells rivers how to flow. And uh I think that is the doorway to mystical experience. That is definitely the doorway. You, 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 can't, you can't get to God in the future. This, this no, doesn't exist. You can't get to God in the past. What past? There's no past. You know, it's memories in our present, in the present. You know, everything's in the present. All my, all, everything I've ever done in my life is right here in the present. You know, it's like the sum total of everything I've, all my days. 
So is there a history? Of course there's a history. Is there a future? Of course there's a future. They're just not real anymore. And it won't be real until the present moves through it. So I'm a great here and now kind of guy. I, I think that the present is part of God. And what you bring to the present is what the present will give to you. If you bring kindness and love to the present, the present will give you kindness and love. And if you're a thief, the present will make you a thief. Whatever you, you know, the, the Torah says, uh, you know, he leads us in the way. <coughs> See, God bless me, I guess. <laughs> he leads us in the way we wish to go. So I believe that. I, I believe I'm not a classic um, Orthodox guy. It's just not. And because it just, I'm just not. It, it, I don't like what they've done to spontaneity. They've crushed it. You know, and uh, so I've, I've never been uh, Orthodox about anything. I am religious exceedingly so, um, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I am who I am. I'm what, I'm what God has made me. I'm not what other rabbis have made me. And I've always felt that I have nothing against rabbis. First of all, I love the Orthodox. I love, I love everybody. I'm just speaking for myself. I've, I've just been devoted my whole life to to my own soul, which which I think everyone should do. You should you ultimately in life you answer to your own soul, and your soul answers to God. So we answer to God, but immediately we answer to our own souls, and uh, that's been my my soul is my teacher, and and uh, it's the teaching part of of who I am. You know, we teach ourselves. And, uh, you know, people are worried about judgment day and stuff. Every day is a judgment day. You, you, you bring it on yourself. You can make hell or heaven out of this world. Uh, and, and one reason they call sin, sin, is when you interrupt a person's right to, to, to build their own happiness. Like, the, God forbid, the Holocaust, where these horrible people tried to control other human beings to the point of, of killing them. You know, it's a mental illness and a sickness of the soul. And a, a whole culture became toxic. And uh, so I'm a believer in the soul. I'm a believer in the present, in the here and now. I believe in the transcendent. I think it's all one. It's all one in you. That's what I believe. And I think it's easy to find God in yourself. The hard part is finding God in others and, and, and treating other people as if you're treating God in disguise because God has lots of disguises and he shows up with women with curly hair and he shows up sometimes as a janitor and he shows up sometimes as a little kid but he's always showing up and uh so we have to be on our toes and treat people the way we would want to be treated you know if i'm talking too much i, I tend to go on and on so i love stop. it keep going you have yep. to stop me if i Thank if you. I, it's the so many quotes i can see on t-shirts that you're saying already so keep going so Love thy neighbor as thyself. Why? Because if you go deep enough, yourself is myself. There's just one great self, the, the, the God of Israel, the great self of the universe. So everybody, even people who are the enemies of Israel, if they go deep enough, they go to the eternal self. And that's why we, we should love our neighbors as our, as yourself. Why? He is yourself. He's just in another form. 
but he is yourself. But you know, most people don't understand that. So that therefore they got they have uh, these laws and these rules that are valid, completely valid. And and I'm certainly not. I'm a, a different kind of person. So everyone's not like me. So um, they have to be like themselves, you know. I, I have no enemies. I don't hate anybody. No one, not even these people who are shooting rockets. You know, you see them, they're just, they're just sad, pathetic almost. You know, they're, they, they, they're so removed from the truth of, of kindness and love for, for life and people. They're so completely removed from uh, what is real. Always blaming other people for their problems. You know what, I've, it's been my discovery in life. Every problem I've really had in my life has been my fault. Really. I had everything that's negative that has come upon me in my life has been my own doing. And everything positive too. So it took me a while to learn that, but I did learn it. We're, life is a do it to yourself game. You know, we can only do so much for others. And uh, hopefully we can do the best we can for others. But uh, I'm, I'm kind of a, a non-dualistic person. I think other people are also part of me and I'm part of them. It, right now, uh, you're, you, uh, my image is in, your, is in your mind. I'm probably more you now than, than your own name, which is, you'd have to say Amalia. But right now you're filling my consciousness. So truthfully, I'm at this moment, I'm more you than, than some name because you're, you're filling my mind right now. So when I look at the world, that's how I see the world. You know, I look out at the universe and um, I just think that God made the universe to match our potential. Infinite potential, infinite universe. And uh, we've just begun. I think we're just, we're, we're, if we don't destroy ourselves, we're, we're just at the beginning of a new era of understanding Judaism, of understanding humanity, of understanding peace between people. And until we learn that our enemies are not our enemies, they're ourselves. We're, we're going to keep botching it up. You know, everything seems so fake lately. It's just, you know, my wife and I were watching the news the other night. And uh, it seemed like America was in free fall. Just dumbing down at a pace. You know, we live here in Columbus, Ohio. It's a nice size American city. You know, it's not Cleveland or Cincinnati, but we're a good sized town and the uh, capital of the state. So they, uh, I saw some guy going downtown with a camera asking people, what's the capital of Ohio? They didn't know. Think of that one. I saw one, you know, Ami Horowitz is his name. You know, so he says, uh, I think it was him. I'm not sure. He says, he goes up to some people in Venice Beach and he says, what year were the first astronauts land on the sun? And, and people are throwing out numbers. You know, and he did that, he, he, you know, absurd things like that. It was shocking, actually. You know, and, and my friend, uh, Dr. Hoffman, is a good friend. I, I mentioned him earlier. Uh, he says, here we are talking about the most subtle levels of consciousness on the highest levels. And there are people in Afghanistan living in caves and, and dirt floor huts, 
no water, no toilets, no nothing. That's the world we live in. And when Paul Simon wrote Lasers in the Jungle, you know, the, one of his lines, in one of his songs, he wrote, we're living in strange time, lasers in the jungle. Wow. We have lasers and we have jungles. And people who look normal, maybe primitive as can be. And, and other people, if you sit next to a holy man, you don't know. So that's why I think you have to be kind to everybody. You don't know who you're dealing with. And, and you don't know the burdens other people carry. You know, some people are suffering terribly. They can't pay their bills or you, you gotta be kind because you don't know the burdens that people are carrying. You know. Yeah, thank you. Those are wise words. I, well, I want, I still have a few more questions about the meditation, but I know right. there are people that are going to want to reach out to you. You have beautiful art in the background and you've been doing that almost your lifetime there. I know people are going to re reach out for you. You said you have a book or books and you have art. Can you explain how we can reach out to you and what, what, what you can offer people who want to connect with you? PaulPalnick.com, P-A-U-L-P-A-L-N-I-K.com. And, then, and you'll see I'm a, a cartoonist and I drew nice comments from Ellie Wiesel and Isaac Besh Besheva Singer. And before he passed away, both of them were very kind to me. And I have those listed on my site. And uh, you'll see the, the kind of work I did. I only started painting lately uh, in the last 10 years, maybe last 20 years, because I had some nerve damage from so much drawing in my rubbing my elbow on the on the table, you know, when you're drawing like that, and it just damaged nerves in my elbow. So the doctor said I better start using my shoulder because my elbow is shot. <laughs> so I started painting, and uh, I still draw, but not like I used to. Okay. Good. It's a one-way, it's a great adventure. This is the ultimate adventure. Why is this happening? Why? It's, it's, a, it's, it's happening because it's the, it's the greatest gift that can be given by, by God Almighty, the gift of life. And it's, it's deep beyond words and it's magnificent and rich and deep. And you, filled with tears and heartache and laughter. So every, it's magnificent. And people, you know, what else is on TV, you know? So I, I, it's my job trying to wake people up to the, to the, the generous gift that God gave us. One last thing, I, I imagine we're running out of time. If some people in their whole life would just say to God, thanks, That'd be enough for the gift of everything. Just thanks, nothing, they get nothing. Like they deserve it, it came to them, no one gave it to them, it's, it's just, they don't think, they don't think. None of us created ourselves, not consciously anyhow. But that's, that's, that's it. So it sounds like if people want to reach out to you, you have art they can buy, art they can commission on your website. And you said books. What books have you written? I uh, have books of my drawings. I've illustrated a bunch of books. Uh, you go on Amazon. If you type in my name, all kind of books come up. Uh, the last one I did was I did a book for Behrman House just recently. What was the name of it? Um, I'm getting old. I can't remember. So uh, uh, getting, getting good at getting older. Uh, I want some kind of Jewish book award. Then um, uh, another one I just finished, um, The Tales of the Chutzpah Rebbe by uh, Walter Rothschild. He's a rabbi in Britain. And uh, then there's a bunch of other things, you know, not so, not so. I did a bunch of things for, uh, well, lots of stuff. You know, it's a lifetime of drawing and painting. It adds up. 
Well, before we go, um, if some people want to shut down, they can, but for those who have a little more that they want to ask of Paul, I know a couple of questions I'd like to ask. And one is the, the two questions. One is the light. Could you describe that light at all? And I still don't understand really a, a little tip on how to, because I'd like to know for myself and I'm sure other people want to know, how do we, I know we can't go exactly where you went, but how do we do that type of meditation? I don't know if there's any one meditation. I do know that a lot of it has to do with letting go of all physicality. So like letting go of possessions. You don't have to sell them, but don't hang on to them. Don't hang on. Let oh, Instead of like this, be like this. Open hands. Uh, here's a simple one. The... Uh, it says in the Torah, uh, God says, Anochi, uh, which is I am. That's God speaking. He says, I am. So let's take the English there. Let's not use the Hebrew. In between the word I and between, in between the word am is, a, is your soul. A great silence a holy great silence that goes on forever and is eternal. It's silent. Men speak. God doesn't have, God causes men to speak, but, but it doesn't need speech. It doesn't need words. And if you become that silence, and continue your meditation. I, I certainly can't say you, you you're going to go to some light, because I, I honestly uh, it was by God's good grace I saw this. I, I I'm not a I'm not a special person. I'm just a regular person. I'm married. I got kids. I, I pay my bills. If if someone cuts me, I bleed. You know. <sighs> I say shit now and then. Uh, I'm not a saint or anything, but but I'm telling you the God's truth. I saw this, and it, you want me to describe this light it was so far beyond white and bright. I I just you could cry. It's so beautiful. I can almost start crying now. It's so beautiful, and I, and there were wonderful people ascending to it. Just just floating up like with their arms back and just just like take me type of thing. And the distinct feeling that I had was take me. I just don't want to go. It's the end of my life, fine, fine. Take me, I'm, out, I'm done. And uh, that was the feeling. Beyond warmth, beyond kindness, beyond love, like a being that created all this so far beyond this that there's no words and the light was like a like a talus around an emptiness not but not a a, a vacuum vacuum a, a purity a great purity of of just mind eternal mind like the the majesty of eternal mind and and it's in everything, flowers and trees. You, you look at your hands, it's filled to the brim with the, it says in the Torah, in the, in the Siddur, Kadosh, 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 Adonai Tzvaot, Malo Koha Eretz Kavodo. The whole, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of, the, the God of Israel. The whole earth is filled with his glory. In other words, we're filled up with the with the, with God. Every inch of you is God, but but we live in a world that robs us of this, of this consciousness, and it brings us down to a commercial for Buicks, you know, or or or, or sp spaghetti or spaghettios or or Kellogg's cornflakes. Nothing wrong with those things, but but that's the world we live in. I think we have to, in a sense, we have to live in this world, but at the same time, we have to transcend it. 
but to go beyond it. And uh, I think that's what Judaism teaches. I mean, we, we have to take what we know and give it and, and make the world a better place. I think that's what the mitzvot are, are about. I, and we're, I'm no rabbi, I'm just an, art, an artist. So I don't get, like when people give me, get the idea that I'm some kind of rabbi, I'm not a rabbi. Um, you know, no, inversed in the law. Um, you know, my friends who's a rabbi teaches me stuff I never heard before, you know. But I am telling you the God's truth and I am an honest man and I'm telling you what really happened to me and uh, that I am, that I am. My final question, because I, I know I could speak with you for another hour, because I know you have more stories. I'm sure more happens. But I guess my final question is, I know based on my own studies of people like you've had experience like that. I haven't had any experience like that. I've said two minor spiritual things I'll tell you afterwards when we shut the video. But usually when someone taps into that other realm, then some other things will happen. You'll have either a special talent with things you see or hear or feel or something else will happen or it just changes you. Has anything, because you went there, do you notice something happened the next day, week, month? Yes, I could. Do you ever walk by a hot stove and you see the shimmering coming up from the heat? I can walk by people and I, and I, I see that same shimmering and I can tell if they're happy, sad, unhappy, miserable, if they cried recently, if they're going through a depressed, difficult period with their mate, if they're struggling for to, to make a living, I can I can see it all instantly. And I can I can look into people to the to the point that it's almost unnerving to me. So that lasted a long how many years ago is this? It lasted that long? It's still going on. It hasn't gone away. That hasn't gone away. That hasn't gone away. Incredible. Because usually it fades over time. It hasn't no. for you. If anything, it's I've gotten handier at it. Hmm. But keep my mouth shut. You know, people people think you're nuts. Yeah. I know there's a lot of people that want to hear, but some people don't. So yeah. They, 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 anything anything out of the ordinary, they think you're crazy. Yeah. Okay. You know. Yeah, well, I don't mind. I don't I don't you know when you get to be 75, you know, I think I paid my dues. I've done, uh, I can say what I want to say. I, that's the only reason I, I'm agreeing to I, to do this, because who knows? Yeah, I could be gone tomorrow. I don't know. So my final question is: Is there anything else I forgot to ask, or anything you wanted to say? Anything that came to mind, or just general maybe knowledge for us humans listening to you? Any tips, advice? I, I would say. Um, um, that the Torah is, is divided up in, into meditations. And, and you, you can take, I, I practice a, um, a Kabbalistic meditation where I'll take a line of the Torah and I'll, I'll, I'll stay with it for a month. And, and all kinds of things begin to happen. You have to be disciplined you have to be able to control your thinking. You know, you, you have to be able to think positive about life and you have to be able to stop thinking when you choose, start thinking. That's another thing. I, I've stopped, when I'm, when I'm speaking, I'm thinking. When I'm not speaking, I'm, it's just quiet. My mind is just peace, a deep, 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 deep peace. There's no words, just silence. And, and you're hearing my thoughts right now. I'm, there's not, I'm not thinking and then talking. I'm, this is, I'm thinking right now. This, these are my thoughts. And, and when I stop, I'm not thinking anymore. It's just quiet. Thank you, Paul. I really, really enjoyed this. Thank you for your time. Thank you for agreeing. I agree with what you do, dear. dear. I, I don't mean that in a condescending way by saying dear, but you seem like a dear soul to me. You call me anything you want. Thank you. What mm -hmm. I'll do too, but for people who forgot your website, if they want to reach you or reach me, 
they just, you know, there's a little arrow at the bottom in the comments and I'll, yep. I'll put more information about you and how to reach you and how to reach me. PaulPelnick.com. PaulPelnick.com and, and you see what I do and send me an email from there if you want. And I'll, I do speak around the, you know, pay people have me out and I do that too. I haven't been doing as much lately because I've, my health hasn't been so good, yeah. but but uh, I'm not, uh, overcoming cancer was rough, very difficult for me. I, I had cancer and I'm better now, but that'll, that'll bring you close to God. I'll tell you that. Thank you, Paul. I really appreciate your time. And I feel like there's another hour or two. Oh, oh anytime. Maybe one day, part two and three. <laughs> and thank you everybody who took time to listen to this. Uh, all I can tell you is it's all true. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Bye, everyone.